afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. <laughs> Welcome to Oregon Historical Society's lovely facility. Do you have any idea what is about to happen right now? No. <laughs> some of you, some of you don't. We are an improvisational comedy group called Sideburns. And what we are, we are very inspired by the film style of Ken Burns and his inspiration of the learning of history. So we being good uh, comedians have learned to mock that mercilessly. <laughs> so what you're gonna see here today is the history of the invention of an item. Uh, the story of which, as you never knew, was the story of the creation of this item. So in order to get ourselves going, we need a suggestion from you. Imagine something in that back room of your house where you store things that you use every once in a while. What are one of those items that the invention of which is not well known? Just yell it on out. The salmon winch. The salmon winch. <laughs> It was the 1860s, and the Oregon Trail had brought thousands to Oregon, seeking their fortune in gold and fish. Egbert Huffington had a plan. <laughs> Papa, I'm tired of eating dog. <laughs> it was the 1860s. Oregon had just become a state in 1859. And times were difficult, and yet people were bold and brave. They had a sense of hope, a purpose of a future, where fish could be caught with something other than their hands. That would be a glorious day. They would no longer look down into the cold streams of the Willamette Valley and plunge their arms in up to their elbows to capture live fish. <laughs> like Egbert Huffington, to change the course of Oregon history and turn a pack of uncivilized Westerners into people who could cheerfully eat in a restaurant with tablecloths and perhaps, maybe occasionally, silverware. <laughs> Dearest Journal, since the last I have written, I have tried several new recipes. The huckleberries were delicious, the greens were fantastic, and yet the fish was left wanting. If only I could capture the salmon that seemed to be running wild everywhere. Oh, or if I could get an egg. An egg would be really nice. <laughs> oh, dearest journal, I shall write to you again tomorrow. Elizabeth Huffington. The problem, you see was that most of the people arriving in Oregon at that time were from the Midwest, and so all they knew were catfish. And, well, really all they knew was catfish. <laughs> and if you had catfish, you know why you want to move away. <laughs> but the fish in Oregon were huge, and they just couldn't figure out how to get them out of the water. <laughs> Egbert Huffington was one of the first sufferers from the now well-known allergic situation in the Willamette Valley. This caused him to carry handkerchiefs with him wherever he went. And often people were unwilling to touch the handkerchiefs that Egbert carried. When he would offer them to someone as they sneezed, they would generally say, no thanks. Because they were usually fairly caked and hard and no longer soft and pliable, like a handkerchief should be. Egbert's weed farm became it came a place where, well, wheat was grown for the most part, and, <laughs> and Egbert experimented with many different kinds of bread. Egbert was, if you will, a baker. A baker with allergies. A man who suffered and yet feared. <laughs> Egbert's gifts to the Willamette Valley would be something that were legend and carried on for years. Egbert, if you're going to sneeze, sneeze outside of the kitchen. You should know better than this. But sneeze outside the kitchen, it's all wheat out there. It just makes me sneeze more. <laughs> the wheat are going to be able to take care of themselves. I'm worried about my latest dish. If I'm going to make you better, you cannot contaminate what I'm trying to cook for you right now. 
if we're going to make me better, we have to find something that I can eat that I don't get allergic to by eating it. Well, we have tried practically everything that grows in the pond. Oh, uh, that stuff that grows in the pond is all small and muddy. Well, I tell you what, if you don't stop complaining, we're going to do like Lewis and Clark's men, and we're just going to feed you all the pets in the neighborhood. <laughs> They ate dog. I know they ate. They ate dog. Do you want to eat dog? I know I they ate dog. dog. No one sneezes like that. No one. Well, well, Egbert does, but no one else. Exactly. <laughs> I don't think it's right, and I think you should do something about it. Are you saying that Egbert is possessed by a demon that needs <laughs> casting out? Something along those lines, Reverend. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you mean. <laughs> I'm so glad. Because in our community, we have no room for snifflers. <laughs> yes, I have souls to save as well as puppies. Uh, I'm just, uh, I don't want to get sick. Oh, is that what you're worried about? Yes. You know, some bandits came by the fort the other day, and I done took their little bandanas, conveniently named, just cover your mouth with it. Tie it. That has quite a nice effect. Well, it is a nice effect, but... <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> it's no use. I've been trying to do that all day. They're just so big and slippery. I know, like, grab them. I get the dorsal fin sometimes, and it just... <laughs> and they get away. <laughs> doesn't matter. Even if you grab them, have you seen how big they are? They weigh like 20 pounds. I know. If I could just get one, I could eat for a week. That's not what I mean. I mean, like, you can reach it over, right, to grab one, right? And then you get one, then what do you do? Wow, you know how to reach them? No! <laughs> That's awesome! What I'm saying is, like, imagine it was a, a rock. Not, a, I mean, like an edible rock, right? And then you go and you pick it up. It's like, that hurts. Try it. Why would I eat a rock? No, pretend it's a fish. Oh, try it. Got it. That when the soul leaves the body in a great wind, <laughs> it is a sin unto the Lord. It is, it is. People of the Columbia Valley. Oh. Wait, wait. Yes. I tell you, oh, no. we enjoy this feast oh, together. No. Oh, no. We shall do it in the praise of God. Yes, yes, yes we shall. No. We shall do it. Breathe in the glory of the Lord and hold it. Reverend, oh! you've, been, you've been sneezed. Demon! You have invaded the house of God. Yes, you have. You and your kind are not welcome here. Be gone! Just a moment. Be gone, woman! That was embarrassing. That's all I have to say. It was embarrassing. And then getting thrown out of church like that. That's just terrible. Who gets thrown out of church? <laughs> Apparently you do. <laughs> Honey, we have got to find a solution to this. There's got to be something here you can eat. Well, I think we could eat the fish. I mean, have you ever heard of anyone being allergic to fish? <laughs> <laughs> we got to get it out of the water. I know, but you know, what's down at the river, the... Willamette or whatever they call it. <laughs> and uh, there were these big fish, right? The salmon. And I was showing them how you can't pick them up. And then we were practicing on rocks, <laughs> right? And uh, what? What do you mean you men could not pick up a fish? Well, they weigh like 20 pounds. So we tried on a rock. And we, like, I, if you reach I, down, I, can I, we? Winch, be quiet. <laughs> what did you call me? <laughs> winch. Quiet. We were picking up the rock, but one person could not pick it up. I'm glad you told me about this. You're, you're right. Hunting with tools is not the way the Lord wants it. No, it's not. No, they should just jump right on your plate and say thank you. I, I have caught many deer with my bare hands. If God had wanted me to use a rifle, he would have given me a gun instead of hands. <laughs> but it is too bad that Elizabeth is being troubled by her no good crazy husband. That's right, Pearl. That's, that's right. It's not his fault. He's possessed by demons. Well, what are you going to do about it? This is your area of expertise. <laughs> I will pay a visit to them and try to cast the demons out. 
Egbert. Reverend. <laughs> That's a mighty complicated tool you got there. It sure is. This here is the future of tools. And the future of fish. <laughs> <laughs> You're putting that mechanical contraption into the water. I am. That's God's water. It is. <laughs> Tools like that belong in the barn. Yet men put boats in water, do they not? Well, well that's true. I... Could a boat not be a kind of tool? And I suppose God did tell Noah to make a very large boat to save all of humanity from the catacombs. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. And did not Jesus walk on the water? No. Yes, but he did it barefoot. <laughs> I should know better than to get into a religious discussion. <laughs> he did not have gears and cables and wires and, and some sort of pulley system. But the fishermen of the day and of the Bible did have nets, did they not? You are a very smart man for someone who's possessed by a demon. <laughs> And that is where you think wrong, for I'm not possessed of a demon. I am possessed of a great idea, an idea that shall put Oregon City on the map. That idea makes you sneeze? <laughs> no, the wheat makes me sneeze. That's why I'm moving to fish. <laughs> so by, by using this contraption, the force that makes you sneeze is being taken out of you. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> do something to ease your burden. I mean, you are saddled with a spouse, with a demon, and he shall be leaving soon, but you don't have to. I have plenty of room in my house. You could come and make your wonderful, wonderful food and feed my family. <laughs> it's a thought. I mean, I have dedicated my years to my good husband, but if he can't see fit, to control his seasons. I don't know what we're going to do together. Well, I, I think it's clear you won't be together. I think I need to go prove myself to him. I think you're not the one who has to do the proving. I think you need to understand that this is beyond his power to control the sneezings. I don't... Then I think you should run and run quickly. I, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Everything is coming together. I want to comfort you, but you've been sneezed on. <laughs> you, brought the, you brought the wrench, right? I always carry the wrench. Well, that's good. You watch for the fish? Remember what you said about hitting the fish with the wrench? You heard about that, eh? I did. <laughs> What's that? What's that's, that crazy contraption? That's part two. <laughs> part two? Part two is the wrench. Oh. You want me to swing at a fish? Yeah, but I want you to hit it, too. <laughs> so maybe this is part three. <laughs> okay. So I ignore the trout. Trout, trout, those don't matter, right? No trout. No, okay, no. no. Nothing good will ever come out of anything named trout. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, so salmon. Salmon. All right. Ah! Nice shot! Now, 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 hold on to it. Yeah, it's kind of floating now. Let's... Hey. All right, we need the uh, we need a third person. Uh, uh, William. Oh, nice. Hey, person number three. Come <laughs> here, come here, come here. I'm William. Yep, whatever. That's plan four. What is this? Thing? Just take the handle. Now run. Oh. There it goes. 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 Oh. I shouldn't oh. be using such contraptions. <laughs> All right, let's stop. And that, my friends. That is dinner that no one will sneeze at. <laughs> Egbert has brought us a fantastic gift. Did he sneeze he on it? His sneezing has left him. The demons have left him. And he has had a vision from God. A vision that will provide us an enormous fish. Which will feed all of us. That's amazing. Husband, I'm oh. sorry I doubted you. Please. Forgive me. You are forgiven, sweetheart. Let me be your good wench. <laughs> I'm going to go catch your dinner for you. And I'm going to go catch dinner for everyone. You're going to need two more people. <laughs> this, this device was named in, in their honor, bringing us all together and bringing us enormous fish at no ecological consequence whatsoever. <laughs> yes, it was the discovery of the salmon wench, which was later patented
invented by the Lutheran Church of Oregon <laughs> and enabled them to build the second largest school system in the country, starting all from the beautiful state of Oregon and the beautiful and magnificent contraption that Egbert gave us in the Salmon Ranch. Thank you for tuning in to the Salmon Ranch. Jamie. Karen. Rosina. Tom. And our fabulous musician, Paul. Yeah.